Okay, very good morning to everyone. It is Monday the 11th of December. Hope everyone survived the snowfall. Um, in terms of this, this morning's briefing, probably going to try and keep it short and sweet. As you can probably hear, I'm not feeling amazing this morning. But uh, nonetheless, there's quite a few things to, uh, to mention, to look out for in this trading week ahead. So hopefully we can just cover off a few of the key themes. Uh, but first of all, just having a look at the charts this morning. And I was actually lecturing on Friday, so uh, I didn't miss the bulk of the non-farm payroll reaction. But just looking at some of the charts this morning, uh, certainly if you're looking at T-notes or... Uh, looking at gold, for example, and equity markets, you'd be remiss to think that we had non-farms at all uh, because very little in the way of any definitive reaction. So just recapping, you had that headline beat uh, 228,000 above expectations of 195, uh, but there was a 17k downward revision to the prior month. Uh, the unemployment in line, 4.1%, so remaining at a 17-year low. Uh, however, the average hourly earnings growth was a little bit softer at 0.2 month to month against 0.3 so overall uh, it's kind of a similar story I guess to what we've had throughout much of 2017 and that really the job situation is pretty healthy in the US the the key factor here is about people getting paid more which still is uh, fairly tepid at the moment and so therefore it does heighten some concerns about the Fed's ability to continue on tightening that this tightening of the labour force will translate uh, in the future into toward higher inflationary conditions, or so they, they hope. But looking at the federal funds rate futures as to what the priced-in amount is for a rate hike, which we're anticipating from the Fed later on this week, it hardly moved. So we're down a tiny bit, but we are, in a sense, still 90, 91% priced for a hike. But remember... Of course, with the Fed, you're going to get the summary of economic projections and also the press conference, uh, the final one uh, with Janet Yellen as well to come. So no doubt we'll be looking more importantly for the future outlook, uh, more than the, the current hike that we're about to see. Uh, just having a look though at the broader charts, the equity market's pretty flat overall. Uh, there's not really too much standout at the market open here. Uh, consequently, T-notes... Uh, pretty much unchanged as to a buns. Uh, and the gold market slightly higher. Uh, the one thing you're seeing is a bit of divergence between the major currency pairs. So euro dollars up here testing at uh, R1, which is about four pips shy or so of the 118 handle, whereas cable is retesting here down at that low print that we'd had late on, on Friday session. Uh, that would also go back to uh, some of the low points that were seen earlier in uh, last week's trade. It's on the 6th and also on the 8th. So worth keeping an eye on the downside of 133.58 in sterling. Uh, and as we'll see on the calendar on the look ahead, there's quite a few Brexit related events still to be on the lookout for. Uh, to get you up to speed though, on a couple of the headlines from the weekend, uh, starting off with China. Although the Asian market's not really too much of a focus at the moment, I think that uh, especially in the context of this week. It is Central Bank Week because you've got the Fed, the ECB and the Bank of England as well as key data, US CPI coming out and these ongoing Brexit talks. So in the context of all these macro themes, I'd say Chinese inflation is kind of a, a bit of a backseat at the moment, but something just worth monitoring. So China's November PPI was in line at 5.8%, but as this headline would suggest, it has moderated from last month's 6.9%. So a slight drop off there in the pace. The CPI reading was a little bit softer uh, by 0.1 at 1.7 from 1.8%. Uh, but as I said, there's been seldom reaction to this in the overnight trade. Uh, the one thing obviously that a lot of people are talking about from this morning, and that is we had the CBOE opening of the futures Bitcoin market last night. Uh, the CME, which arguably is the bigger kind of litmus test because CME uh, futures volume as an exchange is way way higher than the CBOE but as a as a first uh, initial futures session uh, this was the story here so you had two trading halts uh, but in summary uh, the Bitcoin futures contract did rise as much as 25% at its peak uh, one thing it did lead to which kind of is a familiar thing with uh, what we've seen elsewhere with the exchanges on the normal spot price 
is that the CPOE website basically crashed about one second after the futures contract went live. Um, to keep in mind that there was a, this didn't actually affect trading, it was just the CBOE website. But it does go to show though, the immense amount of interest in this particular product at the moment. Um, and due to heavy traffic on their website, that, that did slow it down. If not, it went down completely last night. So just quite interesting. But those who were looking for potentially a big short at the futures commencement were, were disappointed. And actually, we've uh, we rose quite sharply uh, in summary, but again, the probably the bigger test will be this weekend when the CME version of their contract goes live. So, uh, story to be continued at this point. Um, one thing here in the headlines this morning, just going over Bloomberg, that you're going to have to look out for, and, and really this could be um, quite important as we look to see off the rest of uh, this year, really, post the Fed event. Uh, and on Wednesday, we are expecting Trump. He's planning to make a closing argument for tax overhaul on Wednesday. Uh, Republican lawmakers hope to have a bill to, uh, to the president this month. So in terms of, at the moment, the House and the Senate are still working to bring their two versions of the tax bill together. But the timeline is still the same uh, in that he's hoping to have this signed off before the end of the year. Uh, so he's got a, a bigger speech planned for midweek that I think is definitely going to be worth looking out for. Uh, but just jumping forward to the actual week in itself, uh, today is very quiet. There's not a great deal going on at all, but very typical of a Monday. But if we just check out the actual week in itself, it starts to make a bit more sense because this is pretty much the last big week before the run-up to quiz Christmas. Uh, next week is a lot more quiet in terms of economic calendar. So today, in terms of speaker events, you do have EU diplomats discussing Brexit. So, you know, that story is far from complete. Uh, again, the agreement really was uh, very loose on details. They've essentially agreed to keep talking at this point, but the EU summit, of course, will commence at the end of the week, so commentary from EU diplomats still needs to be monitored for any sterling traders uh, going forward for this week. You've also got NAFTA talks as well uh, ongoing, so maybe worth keeping on the CAD and the PESO if you're looking at those in the, in the live FX market. Uh, but looking to Tuesday, you do start to then see the calendar pick up and focus will turn to the UK, uh, in particular UK inflationary conditions. Uh, you'll get the UK CPI rate, the call reading, at Tuesday, 9.30. That'll be followed by the German ZEW economic sentiment. And you then get the run-in of the inflationary readings as far as economic data is concerned for this week. So you get the PPI, call PPIs on Tuesday, and then the main reading being the CPI readings on Wednesday. <coughs> Draghi is speaking as well on Tuesday, and your regular API crude oil infantry numbers. Uh, this week, as far as the UK is concerned, uh, not only to monitor the Brexit situation, so you've got UK inflationary readings on Tuesday, you've got UK uh, average earnings data as well as employment numbers on Wednesday, and then you've got UK retail sales data on Thursday. So quite significant in that respect, uh, particularly a lot of eyes on the, on the retail sector in the UK, which has been... Uh, essentially slowing down in its performance irrespective of the Christmas period given the fact that household incomes have been continuing to get squeezed on these inflationary pressures so a couple of flashpoints of activity potentially for the pound uh, alongside the the ongoing Brexit commentary. Uh, on Wednesday other things to look out for uh, apart from the UK wage data and US inflation numbers quite a lot of speakers uh, you've got Juncker and Tusk in Brexit discussions, this is then the day before the EU summit then begins. And you've got Angela Merkel and the SPD start their formal coalition talks as well. So that's still uh, an issue yet to be resolved. That evening, of course, Wednesday, Fed interest rate decision, summary of economic projections and the press conference. So what's uh, going to be more interesting is do we get another example of what really has been the pattern so far this year, which is basically uh, a dovish hike, i.e. the Fed telegraph, if they have done 
uh, very much that they're going to lift rates. That's not really the key issue. That's already priced in. The question mark is what is the trajectory of interest rate hikes for subsequent years thereafter. Uh, the press conference from Janet Yellen, I probably wouldn't be looking to that to be uh, too or too many fireworks coming out of that press conference because the market has already started to kind of lean towards more uh, Jerome Powell, uh, looking for him for uh, leadership in terms of commentary and, and thoughts going forward for policy. So this is very much more going to be probably uh, a bit of a homage to, to Yellen in that respect. Otherwise, Thursday, uh, aside from UK retail sales we mentioned, you've got the US version of that as well as the various manufacturing and service PMI numbers coming on Thursday morning from the euro area. You've also got for any Aussie traders overnight, uh, and this does tend to be quite market moving information, uh, employment change and unemployment rate. And then you do have two more interest rate decisions. And actually of the three big major central banks, I'd probably say the Bank of England is gonna be the least interesting because they've pretty much set their uh, they've set their path now in regards to they're not going to hike, no way. Uh, they're not going to do that possibly until way into 2019, never mind 2018. And with Brexit, they really have no more clarity of detail to add because at the moment, you know, we still could face this cliff edge scenario. There's no way for the Bank of England to tell because we haven't really even started transitional or trade talks. Uh, what we've just done last week is suffice that we can progress to that point <coughs> so not looking for a great deal from the bank of england uh, but certainly was something we'll need to monitor and of course that'll come at the usual time at, at midday uh, but surrounded by those other factors data uh, and the political situation that's probably going to be more of a key driver ecb though could be a little bit more interesting and i've got some uh, interesting research i can send out to you later in the week ahead of that event now, it's not that the ECB, that the economic picture has changed considerably or that they need to tweak their, um, their communication over their QE program. That's already set in regards to the tapering down of their, their QE purchases. But what we are looking out for is the latest projections coming out of the central bank. So this being for GDP and HICP. So the inflation and growth outlook can determine then how optimistic or pessimistic that the ECB and their central bankers are. Uh, going forward and that will probably be the key to trading that event so that's Thursday and then Friday you get the conclusion of the EU Council Summit which of course will be quite interesting uh, and then the Big Hughes rig count and Draghi's back on the on the tape again as well to finish things off um, so quite an interesting week uh, and probably the most active in terms of scheduled events week that we'll have before then things start to wind down for Christmas probably in terms of trading volume as well Typically, going into the run into Christmas, uh, trading volumes tend to drop off substantially as well uh, as market participants' combination of just closing out their positions for the year, uh, handing the reins over to the juniors who typically would just be sitting on any positions if they are still open. And so activity does quieten down quite a bit. But for this week, at least, quite a bit going on between central bank decisions, um, then also political events from the UK, Europe, Germany as well as the US on the tax reform as well to monitor okay gonna leave it at that any questions though let me know in the chat room uh, and if we'll have a look at some chart setups Sam will I'm sure post some in the room if there's anything interesting that he's looking at as well all right guys thanks very much